God's people come together and our voices are together and we come to worship. And there's this thing that happens when we worship, this thing called an exchange. And it's been on my heart that we're going to exchange mourning for joy. We're going to exchange sorrow for joy. Adversity for victory. Dark for light. And sometimes we get stuck in this darkness and we just don't know how to exchange the light. Well, I'm hearing right now that we're just going to sing it out. We're going to sing out the dark. Yeah. Yeah.
at your throne. Lead us into your presence this morning. That we may cry to the praise of honor. The true God of heaven, the one and only God, creator of the ends of the earth. Thank you, Lord. And you know, uh, normally at this time I would pray for our missionaries, but I'd like to ask Sue Richter to do that this morning. She's got a special announcement, announcement about John and Heidi Wade. I'd like her to, her to do that this morning. Thank you. Praise God. Father God, oh, stand here in awe. And the opportunities that you put before us. And today I just want to lift up Johnny and Heidi on Rosebud Reservation as it is such a dark, dark place. And they are sharing the love of Jesus with the Native American people. God, I would just ask that you would provide all of their needs. Give them protection as there's been a lot of vandalism in their place and they had their vehicle vandalized. And, you know, they're worried about the church building and the house. But more than that, they're just worried about the people and the salvation gift that they are offering to these people through Jesus Christ, Lord. Yeah. So just provide all that you need. And the special announcement is we are going there with a group in June. And if God is laying on your heart to go, I would love to have you. Please speak to me after service because it is an amazing time to just go and be a blessing but also the blessing that God will bestow upon you. Amen. So if God is putting that on your heart today, to go with us to that Rosebud trip. Just please see me after service. But Lord, again, just cover Johnny and Heidi in your blood. And we thank you for them and the work that they're doing. In Jesus' holy and precious name, amen. 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 Oh, yeah, that's right. um, I just have one more announcement. Um, if you have a child that is in grades 3rd through 12th, we want to take your child to camp. Find me after church. I have camp information. Also, I am looking for a couple of male leaders for the two weeks that I know we're going. Um, so if you would like to be a leader at camp, please also find me afterwards. Thank you. Oh, one more thing. If you would like to sponsor a child for camp or just give to the scholarship fund, just put it on your offering envelope, camp scholarship, $10, $5, whatever you want to give. We want every kid to have the opportunity to go to camp, but we don't want to ever let money be an issue. Amen. 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 Thank you, Sue. Uh, so, um, we had a men's retreat that we just got back from, and I thought it'd be really cool to have a couple of our men share a blessing that they got from it. So we had a bunch of our guys go, but one or two of you guys, you want to just grab a mic? Do that. The one blessing that is going to stick with me forever and ever is that no matter what storm we're going through, Jesus is our anchor. I, I learned something out there that just, it turned my whole world around, it blew my mind. That in Mark, when Jesus, when they were all stuck in the storm out in the middle of the water, and Jesus had sent away the people that he just fed and got done praying, he was walking out to them. And in reality, what he said to them when they thought it was a ghost, they're all freaking out, what he said to them was, don't be feared, it's me, the great I am. Which right there tells me that he didn't say, hey, it's me, Jesus. He tells me that he said, I'm your God and I'm coming. And then it states that as he was passing by, but he didn't pass by that time. He got in the boat. He's in the boat with us every day. Our God is here every day with us. And that's the one lesson I took out of it. It was amazing. Yeah, for myself, uh, I think it was just awesome to be with just other men of God. And just to spend time with believers and men that have families that are in similar situations to myself, but even from other churches, and just the unity that comes across as being believers and being, yeah, just men of God, and, uh, and just how encouraging it was to just fellowship and to share and just to tell our stories and how much that just built me up, just to be around yes. other believers and other men. So, because I kind of had a hard day even before I got there, so <laughs> some of them who talked to me know what it was. <laughs> but it was... It was worth it. It was it was just awesome to be around other believers. So it was a blessing. Well, thank you. Yeah, perfect. 
So the beauty, I think, of the weekend was, I counted seven, there may have been more, there was over 90 men, but over seven churches that got together for the purpose of God. worshiping God and encouraging one another. And, you know, hopefully some of those guys will see somebody at whatever Walmart is going, whoa, you're a believer, hey, let's get together. So that's really cool. Could we look at the bulletin real quick? I want to cover a couple of things. If you did not get a bulletin, raise your hand, our ushers have one for you. Hey, we got a hand or two up, our ushers can take care of that. Um, Sue already mentioned a mission trip. Uh, we are ramping up activity as part of the body of Christ in all kinds of ways. Uh, our single mom oil change is coming up on May 1st. We're going to be replacing somebody's roof. We're going to be rebuilding a deck. Um, we have a trip to um, South Dakota. Then in the fall, one to uh, Arizona, to Phoenix, to work in the inner city there. Uh, Kevin told us that probably the Vietnam trip won't happen this year because of the restrictions. But we are doing all we possibly can to get activated for God. I just want you to pray. You know, you say, hey, how could I be used in any of these wonderful outreaches, whether it's locally or, you know, wherever we might be going. Um, Danya has a praise and paint coming up. Man, you had a great turnout last time, Danya. Like, I came in here with a place full of women. I knew I didn't belong here. So. Anyway, uh, she's quite an artist and uh, loves teaching people and helping people develop their gift in that way. Dan and Annie Cabriana are, are offering ongoing ongoing prayer for needs, particularly healing. They feel like the Lord wants us to be soaking people in prayer that are struggling with physical things, and they're offering that, and there's a phone number uh, for you there. So lots going on in the kingdom. I'm glad to be alive today. And to see God had, God's hand at work, um, it's not an easy day to be a believer, but it's a good day to be a believer. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. you know, as the enemy tries to rise up like a flood, God brings on some people. Yeah. So he's yeah. doing that. Do we have any Star Wars fans? Woo! Okay. All right. Well, a few of you. Are they doing any more of that? I haven't checked. Are there more? Yeah. yeah. So there's, it's an ongoing franchise. They're making the money. Well, but, you know, I, I was going to say... I was going to say, you are the gift, because that's true. I mean, it, 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 you'll understand what I'm about to put together here. But I thought, let's do a Yoda moment here. Yes. You know? The gift, you are. <laughs> All right? The series that we're headed into starting this week is called the 24-7 Church. And my sort of thesis behind that, the message I'm trying to get out, um, is that all of us have a gift. And when the gifts are activated, we truly are a 24-7 church. Nobody here believes that this is all great. Nobody. nobody. Nobody just lives for a Sunday morning experience. We don't believe that. We don't see that in the book of Acts either. We, we don't see anything like that in the Bible. Sure, they gathered together. In fact, the Bible says they, they would gather together in a temple. That's before too much persecution happened. And they would study there and minister there. But then even from house to house, it was like a... A daily thing. I mean, God forbid we would do this every day. Are you kidding? Be alive in Christ even when it is on a Sunday morning. I'm kidding, obviously, right now. So I want to convince you that not only that we are wanting to be a 24-7 church, but you're a part of that answer in that you are. You don't just have a spiritual gift. You are a gift to us in our community. Now, let's just stop right there, because I think we could easily go. We used to say in college, Zoom, figly on, yeah, over my head, whatever that meant. But <laughs> you need to look around and see the gifts in this room. Do that. Yeah. Right now, do it. I want you to see a bowl and some heads. And the reason I say a bowl and some heads, because there are still some gifts in this room that aren't open. Oh. God has gifted, again, you've got to let this sink in. God has gifted you. There's nobody like you. You have an anointing, and there may still be a time for some training or something to happen, but in these last days before Jesus comes back, he wants a church that's without spot or without wrinkle, that's pressing into him, and I don't know that we even know what it's going to look like completely in the last days, but he needs all of us to be activated. The Apostle Paul says in 1 Timothy 4.14, uh, of course, Timothy was kind of, his, he was mentoring Timothy, and he wasn't with him all the time, but he kind of said, uh, he kind of said, I, I want you to grow, but he said, Timothy, I've been hearing something. I don't want you to neglect your spiritual gift. I wonder if God would say that to us today. Don't neglect what God's put inside of your heart. 
Yeah, uh, Jordan, a couple weeks ago, I said Jordan was preaching about that whole idea of being given a tremendous treasure, like, like a bag of gold. And one guy went and invested it. And, and really, that's what we're talking about today is investment, right? We're investing who we are. And this one guy invested it, and he got so much more. And another guy invested it, and he got so much more. And what did the last guy do? He found a shovel. And he, he, he said, man, I don't want to lose any of this money. But actually, what he was averse to was risk. You think about it. When God calls you into doing something, is there risk? Oh, baby. Because here's what's going to happen. People are going to misunderstand you. You're not going to be on TV the first day. So the Lord, well, you might, I don't know, but usually it doesn't happen that way. So each of you, uh, let's look at First Peter. In fact, let's get the scripture out there right away. Would you read together with me? There's only two verses, First Peter. Peter knew about this stuff, verses 10 and 11. Let's read there where it starts with each. Each of you should use whatever gift you have received to serve others as faithful stewards of God's grace in its various forms. If anyone speaks, they should do so as one who speaks the very words of God. If anyone serves, they should do so with the strength God provides, so that in all things God may be praised through Jesus Christ to the glory of Beyond power forever. I'm sorry, I missed that last one up. But anyway, him be glory and honor forever. Okay, first line there. Each person, each each believer, I should have put there. Everyone that's connected with Jesus Christ, got the Holy Spirit within. You have one or more spiritual gifts. A lot of people don't know that they have more than one. So, for instance, a spiritual gift would be mercy. And you say, what might that look like? Well, in our context, it might be sitting for hours next to somebody's bedside as they are, are languishing in pain and just being a comfort and, and that's a gift a mercy gift some of you I don't even want you near my bedside when I'm in trouble <laughs> rise up from the dead sucker get up but that would be a mercy or, or, or a compassion gift from the Lord right but that may not be your only gift there may be another gift inside of you as the Lord wills that he wants to use in some completely other different context and so you are gifted. You are probably multiply gifted, but I can guarantee you, I'll take this to the bank until I die, you have at least one. The Bible says you have at least uh, one gift. Now, I want to use an illustration here. Let's just say I'm going to build a house. And I want a general contractor, but I don't know how to do much of it. I'm going to general it, and I'm going to hire guys. And I hire a bunch of tradesmen that I have confidence in. But on the day we start, the electrician decides that pulling wire is just too hard for him. He, he just decides it. I, I just, that's too hard. I can't do that. And then the cement guy comes. He says, I forgot how to use a trowel. <laughs> and then the roofer tells me he's never laid shingles before. Well, I have a problem, don't I? Right away, I've got a problem. The materials are there, but the person that's putting the materials together either doesn't know they have to give they haven't been trained enough, or they just don't want to do it, i.e. spiritual gifts. They either don't know they have the gift, they haven't been trained to use the gift, or they just said, I don't want to do it. Okay? So God has hired a bunch of tradesmen, us, to build his house. And, and Paul knew this when he wrote to Timothy in a second letter. He says, for this reason, I'm reminding you with this letter Paul's actually last letter to his, his son in the Lord Timothy, to fan and to flame the gift of God. So I don't know, you know, if you get around campfires and stuff, but sometimes the fire goes down. And do you ever blow on it sometimes? Yeah. Okay, so you get under it, you look stupid, I know, but uh, there's these embers and you put a little, you put a leaf or, a, a, you know, something near it and you go, man, if I just blow on it, well, that's what we're hoping to do here by the Holy Spirit, is to blow on that ember. In, there's an ember in you so that it becomes a, a flame uh, for God. So I want you to say something with me. Our first declaration about this whole thing. I have a spiritual gift. Say that. I have a spiritual gift. And it's up to me to use it. It's up to me to use it. Okay, you can go on. <laughs> now that's work right there. Yeah, see, we often think of work as just, um, you, you know, something that makes me sweat. Obviously, it's part of it. But the truth is, the work of God is to believe. Yeah. 
The hardest thing you'll ever do in this life is believe. Really believe. Because believe is an action word. Just like love. Se secondly, out of, uh, we're in verse 10 still in um, 1 Peter 4. It says, whatever gift you have received, use it to serve others. And I, I have found serving others is so easy. And it never really costs me anything. And they're always appreciative every time I serve them. No. No. The apostle uses the word faithful stewards. Now, a steward is someone that has someone else's property and puts it to use. If you gave me your tractor and I and I took it out of my field and used it and took care of it, I was a good steward of what you gave me to use. I might have used it in your field, whatever. If I junk it and trash it and let it run out of oil, I'm a bad steward. Or if I let it sit and get rusty, right? Okay. So Here's the deal. If you're going to be, well, like what Peter says here, a faithful steward of God's grace, and grace is the word charis, from what we, we get the Greek word charisma or charismata, which means spiritual gift. Each of you have a spiritual gift. If you're going to be a faithful steward of God's grace, the word faithful means a couple things to us. First of all, it means you're going to have to endure over the long run, like perseverance. Is that right? You're going to have to endure over the long run. Um, you're going to have to work hard and you will bear fruit in time if you stay on task. Okay? You may be clumsy initially. So if, let's just say God tapped you on the shoulder and said, hey, I want you to start working with a certain age group of kid. And you're going, oh my goodness, that's terrifying. But if he's really laying that on your heart, you, you would start, that first day is not going to be easy, right? You might be a little clumsy. You might, might be terrified of these kids or whatever it is. You're, you're going to have to start. And maybe the full fruit that you want initially won't, won't come to you. Everybody, everybody that gets anywhere goes through the hard times to see that thing happen. But you're faithful. You're faithful through the hard times. How do you make it in marriage? People have asked me. Oh, we've been married a lot of years. You know what? Here's my answer. Don't give up. Amen. Let's see. Can I write a book about that? It would just say, don't give up. Don't give up. Don't give up. Don't give up. I can make a lot of money. That's how you stay married. You don't give up. Well, there's more to it than that. But you don't give up. Same with the faithfulness of the gift of God. God so there's this lady named Florence Chadwick. Do you remember that name? Florence Chadwick, 1952. She was a lady that swam the English Channel. She wanted to swim from Catalina Island to the mainland of California. It just so happened the day they picked was super foggy, super cold, uh, but she was strong enough for it. And they had boats, you know, nearby, but she was going to swim the whole way. They even had to shoot at sharks. Honestly, she was going to do it. Here's what happened. She got a little cold. She got a little tired. And the, the pathway got rough and she just said, I can't make it. And her mother was in one of the boats and said, honey, let's just keep pressing. Well, she couldn't say anything to her. Just let you keep trying. She said, I just can't, mom. She got in the boat. They were a half mile from land. 26 miles of swimming, 25 and a half. She was a half mile. She did it again. Another foggy day, she made it. Why? She said, in my mind, I kept seeing the shore of California. I never gave up. She said, at some point, this is visionary. You begin to see yourself in a different light. I'll guarantee many of you do not see yourself as a gift. You are. God's bigger than you, and he said so. You don't see yourself as a gift because you feel unworthy. You feel like I've done so much bad in my life. Uh, you've been cut down by either parents or people that attacked you. Maybe you really tried one day and someone didn't receive it and didn't bear the fruit you thought. But you are a gift. I want you to remember that. You are a gift to the body of Christ. And like Peter says here, just to use that as faithful steward, of God's grace in its many various forms. So none of us will look alike. You don't sacrifice your personality to do whatever your gift is, but your personality enlivens the gift of God. And it's a wonderful thing. By the way, when we get to heaven, we don't lose our personalities. Uh, it gets a little bit refined. You should look at somebody and say, yours could really use some refinement. The truth is you go, you go to heaven and we'll recognize one another. I will know each of you and you'll know me in our more purified body and form, but it's still us. It's still you. So what do we do? Thank you for that. What do we do? 
So what do we do if we're going to move ahead in number two here about being faithful to the Lord? Well, you can't be faithful to something you've never tried. So we're in a discovery process. And by the way, you can be older in life and maybe not have moved in a gift and God can anoint you for that gift at this point in time. Right. Okay, let me just do a little segue here for you retirees or near to retirees. God gives you no permission to give up. Just because you're retired, there are not beaches in your future. Unless it's in evangelism. You do not have permission to do nothing. Because you're old. Look at Papa Moses. Look at Joshua. All the disciples served until when? They died. You don't give up until you die or you're physically incapable. That is not the goal of the Christian. That's the goal of the American. Who isn't going to heaven, by the way? Yeah. That's American thinking. I don't want to hear any more about you spending the rest of your life on some beach. I'll have to rebuke you. Because that's not God. I know the will of God for you is to stay active in... Now, you maybe can't do the heavy-duty stuff. Ed and I kind of held each other up at the men's retreat yesterday. We're kind of achy and anyway. <laughs> but we can do something... Yes. We can do something. If you're bed bound, you could pray. Amen. If you got a phone, you could call somebody and encourage them. Amen. How many of you have been calling people to encourage them in the faith? Right. What a revelation that would be if we just started being encouraged. There's gifts that need to be opened in this room. Amen. Right. Number three. We can be already highly spiritually gifted and still immature in the gift. There's a couple things we have to say about that. There's a guy named Saul in the Bible that was extremely gifted. You don't get any more gifted than having the prophet Samuel pour oil on your head and say, you are gifted to be a king. He even prophesied. He spoke as a prophet in the gift of God. You don't get any more anointed to that. But what did Saul do? He messed it all up. Why? Because he was spiritually immature. The gifts of God to him were all about himself. He missed what Peter was saying here. Oh, well, what's it say? Use whatever gift you've received to serve others. Oh, Paul was all about, I'm sorry, Saul was all about himself, his ideas, his way. A couple of times he's super messed up and the kingdom got taken away from him. The Corinthian church is the same. Any of you have read the book of 1 Corinthians? I will tell you, it is a letter to a messed up church. But what did Paul say? Let me share with you. He opened up, this is a great way to bring correction to somebody. He started by thanking God for what they were and who they were. He says, I thank my God for you because of his grace, charis, charisma, uh, in Christ Jesus. For in him, you have been enriched in every way. Boy, they had gifts flowing there to beat the band. With all kinds of speech, and he's speaking about speaking gifts here. It could be prophecy, it could be tongues and interpretation, it could be teaching. Lots of gifts, and with all knowledge. God thus confirming our testimony about Christ among you. That's Jesus working in his fellowship. Therefore, you do not lack any spiritual gift as you eagerly await for our Lord Jesus Christ to be revealed. That sounds like pretty good stuff to me. It was no rebuke. Yeah, they had some of them out of line, and there was some pride in there, and they even were suing one of, and all that kind of stuff. Now, all of that stuff, which was naked, but he still compliments them on the fact that they're pressing in. And, you know, Paul is pretty clear in 1 Corinthians. He said, earnestly desire spiritual gifts. Well, I'd like that to be said of me. He's earnestly desiring to move in, because the spiritual gifts is where blessing comes. Not from me, but from the Spirit. Okay, you ready for another declaration? Yeah. I will be faithful to operate. I will be faithful to operate in the gifts God has given me. Secondly, I will pursue spiritual maturity. I will pursue spiritual maturity while I seek to express my gifts. I seek to express my gifts. So here's the deal. The other side of the number three is yes, we can blow it, but truthfully, who's good enough to operate in a spiritual gift here? Are you? Yes. Well, you are in Christ. Yeah. But if I follow you around, I bet I'll hear a cuss word or something. <laughs> I bet you'll have a thought. There's something that we all are dealing with, right? We can't wait until that's perfect. 
we have got to begin to operate and mature along with the gift. That's why in number four, we're going to talk about grace and fruit for a minute. The gifts of the Spirit and the fruit of the Spirit are entirely different, but they're both necessary. Okay? The first one, the fruit is related to character, who I am in Christ. Even if I'm not operating in the gifts, the fruit can be ought to be in my life because Jesus is in me by the Holy Spirit, right? So I have love and joy and peace through him. I can choose to express that or not. But the more I express it, the more like Christ I am. There's faithfulness and gentleness and kindness and self-control. Every one of us is growing those. I want to say the fruit is more important than the gifts. Right. And Paul says in 1 Corinthians 13, well, you might be able to move mountains by faith, but if you don't have love, not going to do anything. So, so Paul would encourage, I think the whole Bible would encourage, be sure you're growing in love and, and faithfulness and joy and peace while you pursue the spiritual gifts. We need that as the background. It's sort of the foundation of who we are. You don't put a building up until you have a foundation. And the fruit of the Spirit, Galatians 5, now 22 and 23, that is the foundation of spiritual gifts. We will do a lot of, we'll have a lot of trouble like the Corinthian church if we don't learn how to operate in the fruit as well. Okay? We all good so far? You still love me? Yeah. Or you're trying to at least. Okay, great. Number five, we are to pursue those gifts that best bless the body of Christ. There's a lot of gifts out there. I don't think a moment ago we showed you a slide just to expose you to some gifts that are kind of cool. Can I have that slide back up, Anna, by the way? Let's look at, yeah. So I'm not going to get into this, but there is, you know, a, a good bunch of the gifts. There are some that I still want to uh, approach up there. I don't think craftsmanship is up there, but there are other gifts that God has exposed in the Bible. Um, celibacy would be a gift if you've been um, gifted that way. By the way, uh, we want to be a church that honors true singlehood and the value of singleness to the body of Christ. Right. we got to quit trying to match everybody up. Right. Oh, the matchmakers in the church. My goodness. Right. Like, you just can't be happy unless you get married. And if you get married, well... Uh, so if you want kind of, if, if this is an introduction to you about the gifts those are four good places to begin to expand and as you begin to pray over the next four weeks or so as we're in this um, if you would begin to think Lord what of those if I have one and I don't know what it is what of those would you want to use me in maybe I don't understand and then then as you begin to like feel faith build up in some area there, maybe a brother or sister in Christ would say, you know, I think you should try that. That's the gift of the body of Christ. I think that's potential in you. And, and as you pray and, and read the word and people speak into your life, you may find real blessing. I'll tell you under 1 Peter 4, what we're just reading here, the gift of serving. Dude, anybody can do that. Amen. In fact, everybody should do that. Maybe not at the level that that specific gift is. But I've always told people, that piece of paper on the floor is yours. That's not mine to pick up. Oh, if I get to it, I'll pick it up. Yeah, if there's something to do, you're called to do it. Right. Right. Why don't we have to delegate everything around you? When it comes to serving, we are all servants of the Most High God, right? Yeah. So when we stack chairs at the end of service, a homeschoolers can use the building, that's not two people's job. Hello? We can serve, but there actually there is a context of serving which is phenomenal. Every one of those produce phenomenal fruit when you're anointed in that area. And then you can gather people with you, under you, around you, within the vision to do that, which I would suggest highly. You know, really having groups around you, like Dan and Andy are getting a group around them to pray over the sick. That's the way it should be. They're spearheading it, but they need a team. We And so if you don't know what you are, one way to learn is to be part of a team. You know, so maybe you're thinking you're gifted, uh, you know, in, in music or singing or something. Come to one of our praise team leaders and maybe they'll let you try it. I'm not making any guarantees. Because your voice might clear out a bar. I don't know. But uh, we'll give you a shot. 
<laughs> my forever. Anyway. Now, wouldn't it be cool, you guys, to just spend an hour with someone who has the gift of faith? Amen. Now, I'm not talking about someone that believes in Jesus. I'm talking about the gift of faith. Those people think and dream in the vision of what God can do. Yeah. They don't see any obstacles. They get a dream and they start running. And, you, you know, they're like a motorboat. If you want to join them, you know, you better get some skis on. Amen. Hello? Yeah, that's that's the power of these gifts. Oh, my goodness. Just so wonderful. You bet. All right. Finally, all spiritual gifts, as Peter says in 1 Peter 4, all the gifts are to bring God glory. So here's what happens in the kingdom. Somebody tries and fails and they keep pressing in and pretty soon they start bearing fruit in a gift and then they might even get, you know, what the world would call good at that gift. They are good at recovery. They're, they're good at compassion ministries. They're good at whatever, whatever it is God's given them. And then, you know what old devil wants to do? He wants you to start thinking about how good you are. And if at that moment, if you don't immediately turn it over to the Lord and say, no, this is for the glory of God. We've seen it go to people's heads before. There are people on TV where it's gone to their heads. You know, and I'm not saying they all have it. The issue being, if we don't continually say to God be the glory, that this is his gift, I get to steward it, it's his grace for a time. I want the body to be blessed and encouraged in the gift, and I want God to get the glory. That's right. Amen. So everything we do, we do with that mindset. It's a spiritual gift given to me as a manager to use. And I will tell you, a lot of people think they just get the gift and then they just go operate in it. No, 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 no. You get a gift, the work starts. Yeah. You start pressing in. You know, prayer can be work. Yeah. 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 Praying into that gift. Starting to get trained in that area. Uh, embracing whatever God brings your way. I don't know what your pathway will be, but I will tell you a couple things. It's going to require some humility. It's going to require servanthood. It's going to require sacrifice. Nobody gets anywhere without sacrifice. And let me just add something that came up in our, our men's retreat. Suffering. Yeah. If you're gifted and you're following Jesus at some point, it's going to hurt, and he's going to ask you to stay right there and do it. Because ministry is not easy. Ministry is service. The word ministry, diaconics, is service. It's what people that wash feet did. That's what we're all called as ministers, priests of the Most High God. So, um, one more declaration. I will give God glory, I will give God glory. for all the good. Good. That, comes from that comes from the use of my spiritual gifts. Spiritual oh, that feels good to say that. We're going to have one last uh, slide up here. Um, a lot of you know about Isaiah the prophet. And Isaiah, most of the uh, Old Testament prophets were called to a very hard job because the people, they, they didn't want to hear it. They were hard-hearted. They, uh, they just said, ah, well, we want to have God's blessing, but we want to have our idols too. By the way, some of our idols are parked in our driveway. But anyway. I missed that class in Bible school about winning friends and influencing people, I think. But anyway. Um, so God comes to Isaiah and Isaiah's going, I can't do this. The people are hard. Everything I'm being called to is just tough as nails. But you know what? There's spiritual hunger out there. And there's people that need you. I can't do it. I can't live your gift. I, I, you have something special. There's a bow on your gift that needs to be opened. I would pray today would be the day. But at some point, I pray your gift gets open. And by the way, it may not make you money. Get that out of your brain too. <laughs> not all the gifts of God fill your pocket. In fact, it may empty it. <laughs> Hello. Amen. This is so good. I think I'm going to listen to it afterwards. <laughs> miss anything. I wonder if we could say what Isaiah said. When the Lord, the Lord Jesus out of heaven, him and the Father and the Holy Spirit from heaven said, we don't know who to send. Who are we going to send? 
We've got a pocket of ministry. We've got a need over here. There's something that we, there's something to do that we have to send. And he found a humble guy named Isaiah that just said those five words. Here am I. Send me. Let's pray. Oh, Lord. I guess it would be kind of cool if we just gave our heart to the Lord and then did nothing and went to heaven. But that's not the purpose. I pray that through the brokenness of our lives, the learning to be like Christ, the trials, the tribulations, the sufferings, in spite of all that, we would say what Isaiah said. Here am I. Send me. And in the quiet of our soul, like the prophet Samuel as a little boy, he began to hear, Samuel, Samuel. And he thought it was some human voice, but it was God's voice. Samuel, I've got a big job for you, an anointed life for you. I've got stuff for you to do. Will you hear the voice of the Lord today? Would you obey what your heavenly Father is saying? Would you lay everything else aside, no matter how costly it is? And oh, friend, it's costly. It is so costly. But when you pay the price, it is so fulfilling to do what the Lord has for you. Right now, Father, I think I mentioned something earlier about not giving up. There are people here that need that encouragement in their heart to not give up. Maybe it's in marriage, maybe it's in a ministry, whatever it is. By the Holy Spirit, I pray you would put some steel in their spine to stand strong exactly where God has them and to not give up. Like Jonathan in a field of the Philistines saying, you know, if God is with me, who can be against me? There's nothing impossible with God. In a moment, as we are singing this final song, we're going to be praying with people up here because the Bible says with two or three, there's power. And we're not going to pray something different. We're going to be in agreement with your prayer as you either stand or kneel up here. You're just done with the old. You're embracing the new. You've maybe tried and failed, but you're willing to run again with the goodness of God. You're just saying, here am I, Lord. Use me. I don't even know what that means, but I'm saying, here am I. Use me. It's in Jesus' name we pray. You're welcome to come up and just kneel at the altar and we'll pray over you or just worship God in your seat. I was just reminded of something that's very important that I need to do and we are going to sing for a couple minutes here. I have a missionary online at 11 and it's 5 till. Um, what you're going to love about this is this is a man that was highly successful in business. I mean highly successful in business. And he had a midlife change. Tell me that didn't cost him something. And he's going on the mission field. And he's had to humble himself to ask, beg, whatever, for support. Something he's probably never had to do before. In that humbling, to ask for support. All right, let's sing a song in at 11. We're going to have that, have that soon called. Oh, yes, Lord Jesus.
Jesus. gifts and that sometimes that can even be sacrificial. Tell us about yourselves, what made you want to do this and where you're headed. Yeah, thanks Pastor. Good morning. We are your missionaries, Pastor Todd and Julie and Dietrich to Burundi, Africa. So thank you for letting us uh, join you here a little bit this morning. Sure. So as we get started, I want to tell just a very short story. It's one of those aha moments and I think we've all had them. So it was just a couple of weeks ago, we were in a church service and we were setting up our table and getting be ready for service. And I could hear a, a mom and a little girl in the background and they were having this conversation that today there was a missionary from Africa here and they were gonna tell us what they were doing. And the little girl was asking a, a bunch of questions. And as I turned around to look who was behind me, the lady was pointing at me and she said, that's the missionary right there. And it was in that aha moment, Pastor, that um, I suddenly had this great revelation, right, that God had called us to be missionaries to Burundi, Africa. Wow. We believe God has paved the way for us to go to Burundi, Africa. And we're going to be working alongside the Burundian Assembly of God National Church. And while we're there, we're so excited to be God's hands and feet and his voice in a country that so desperately needs him. Awesome. Yes. As we go to Burundi, Burundi is a really interesting country. And in fact, uh, Pastor, uh, we've served as Northridge Church's missions pastor for the past 12 years. 
And we've had opportunity to go all around the world and doing medical evangelism and children's ministry and kids and youth. It's just been a wonderful opportunity. And it was during those years that we were ministering in short term trips that God called us. And we knew that he had placed a call on our lives. Now, we didn't know when and we didn't know where, but we know now that God has called us to Burundi, Africa. And with all transparency, 18 months ago, we didn't know where Burundi, Africa was, but <laughs> we know today. So Burundi is a country of 12 million people. It is the world's second poorest country in the world. It has an average income of $648. And then this is the, the statistics that hurts me the most. 45% of the country is 14 years of age or younger. It's an incredible opportunity that the country from 1993 to 2006 went through a terrible period of civil war and genocide period where physically hundreds of thousands of people were killed. But God has called us to go to Burundi, Africa, to be his hands and his feet to that country. There are three common languages in Burundi. The first is French. French is the language of the business, the healthcare, and the medical people. In addition, the Kurundi is spoken in the rural areas. So think of Burundi, Kurundi. And then also in the um, younger grades in school, they're teaching English. There are several um, in the nation religion, and uh, religion is over 60% um, is Christian. That's the majority, but it's in name only. And in, uh, the Burundian National Church is alive and it's doing well. In fact, there are 63 Assembly of God churches in Burundi right now. And so we look forward to doing ministry with them. One of the ways that I'll be doing ministry with them is I'm the healthcare provider, and I'll be arranging medical clinics in the areas in which there's church plans. In addition, I'll be doing health hygiene education, dental hygiene, and uh, feeding programs. So my ba uh, background professionally has been banking, healthcare, executive leadership um, level. I've been a professor with the University of Wisconsin Education System for 25 years, and I have a doctorate degree in leadership education. So as we go to Burundi, I am going to have the opportunity in which to establish the first ever Bible school in the country of Burundi. This is an incredible opportunity. There has been no Bible school at all in the country of Burundi. Imagine being able to train pastors and church leaders and send them back to their own village to do church planting and to carry out the good news of Jesus Christ. I have to tell you, Pastor and Church, um, our, our journey, we're calling it Dietrich's journey, has truly been a, a journey of obedience. In fact, God has laid on Julene in my heart the theme obedience um, over our journey as we began about a year ago. And in particular, the story of the obedient act of Gideon, the story found, is in, found in Judges 6. You know the story, right? Gideon's in the wine press and an angel taps him on the shoulder and goes, Gideon, you are going to lead the Israelites out of the hand of the Midianites. They have been held captive for seven years. And Gideon goes, no, no, angel friend, um, I don't think it's me you're looking for. And through an act of obedience, Gideon obeys and he begins to lead the army of the Israelites. You know the story, right? 32,000 men, 10,000 men. Gideon ends up with 300 men and he does battle and God brings victory through his obedient state, right? Amen. Friends, I have to tell you, Julian and I are leading and living that obedient state that God has called us, albeit we don't understand fully all of the reasons, but what we do know is God doesn't call us to do the hard stuff but he calls us to do the impossible. And friends, as we get ready to go to Broody, we know that God has laid before us this incredible opportunity to be his hands and his feet to the people of Burundi. We believe that God has called us to surrender everything in honor and submission to him. And when that call came, we always said, oh, we're gonna go no matter what, whenever, but when it came, it was very difficult. 
we realized how comfortable we had become in our jobs. We liked our jobs, we liked our home, we liked financial security. In addition, we just know that the timing of Burundi being open to the gospel is not coincidental and that we are going for a very strong purpose that he's called us to. Yeah, friends, we get asked often, what can we do to support your ministry? What, what, what do you want us to do? How can we partner? And we say three really, really simple things. We say, number one, please pray for us. Pray for wisdom and direction and guidance in our ministry. Second, uh, we're, we're going 8,000 miles away from home, and we've created an, an encouragement partnership where we, we're asking people to come alongside us and to partner with us by sending us a birthday card and an anniversary card, a Christmas card. Remember us some throughout the year and just encourage us along the way. Uh, albeit if you do send a card, you have to send it four months in advance. The mail service isn't so good. And the, and the third thing, and with transparency, is we're, we're just asking people that we're communicating with and touching with that they be obedient to what God might lay in their heart in which to financially support us. Friends, we won't have jobs when we go to Burundi and we won't have paychecks, but we are standing in faith, believing through obedience that God will lay on his people and the hearts of pastors and churches around the state of Wisconsin and the Midwest to help us, partner with us with their financial, their prayer, and their encouragement support. So friends, together, the big church, the big seat church, we have an incredible opportunity to minister to the people of Burundi, Africa. So thank you, church, for allowing us to be part of the ministry through and with you. Thank you, friends. We, we love you and appreciate you so much for allowing us to share our heart this morning and the story of our call to Burundi, Africa. Todd, if you wouldn't mind, could we just pray with you before we end this call? Yeah, please. Actually, thank you. Yeah. Okay. Heavenly Father, thank you for the call of God upon this couple's life. They're so precious. And you tapped them on the shoulder and they said yes. That's what we're all asking is you would tap us on the shoulder and say we could all say yes to your will. And it might be in the sending and sending the cards and sending the finances and sending the prayers. But we want a part in what we're doing around the, around the world, and this is certainly an opportunity. So we pray you would send this precious couple, Todd and Jolene, with your anointing, your blessing, your protection, and your boldness, Lord, to do all that you called them to do, that nothing would hinder every roadblock out of the way. We commit them to your care, in Jesus' name. Let's give it up for Todd and Jolene. Are they wonderful? Thank you for taking time with us. I'm going to have a couple last words, and uh, then we're going to be dismissed for fellowship. Appreciate you guys. Thank, Thank you, Pastor. You bet. So if you feel compelled, maybe you could have the lights on, guys. If you feel compelled to give, you can write Todd, Jolene, Burundi. We'll get it right to them. We give everything that you give to the missionaries. We don't keep anything. But I, I hope something more than that happens. I want us to support missionaries. But I hope we go personally to the Lord and say, where do I fit into the program? What could I do? What, what, what way would God take my faith and manifest something really cool on the earth? And I'll guarantee you, like they said, it won't just be hard. It might be impossible, but he can use you. Amen? Amen. Go in the Lord Jesus. Be blessed. Share his love wherever you go, and let's have some fellowship together. Take care.